assalamu alaikum welcome to virtual university today we are going to have our fifth lesson and this is a lesson about link words in our last lesson you were introduced to these two terms references and connectives and uh, if you remember just to recap what we did last time uh, sentences and paragraphs are not mere words put together they express ideas which are connected to each other in today's lesson we will practice to recognize these references and connectives that is words and phrases that link ideas in sentences these words these references and connectives they make the text smoother to read and a skilled reader uh, is able to recognize these words and make the connection within sentences and between sentences so references are sometimes pronouns sometimes demonstrative pronouns and at times they are adverbs and sometimes they are even substitutes for words that will either come later or have already appeared in the text uh, we will look at a number of sentences and we will look at the references within a text you will find seven sentences on your screen some of the words in those sentences are in italics and some are underlined you will have to make the connections between the italicized words and the underlined words which underlined word goes with which italicized word five of these sentences have been done for you I shall go through them with you and show you, point out to you where the connection is. You can do the last two on your own. Read the text, text number one, the first sentence. Mr. Salman bought a new car. His children haven't seen it yet. Now in this sentence, you find the word Mr. Salman in italics and the word a new car in italics. In the second sentence, it is his that is underlined and the word it that is underlined. Now, a good sentence, in a good sentence, you do not, the writer does not repeat. He could have written, Mr. Salman bought a new car, Mr. Salman's children haven't seen the new car yet. Now that would have sounded very monotonous. So instead of repeating Mr. Salman and a new car again and again, the writer chose to use a pronoun, the word his, the word it. Now Mr. Salman, his ref the word his, the pronoun his refers back to Mr. Salman and the word it refers back to the word a new car and by using these two words these two references it makes the text easier to read mr salman bought a new car his children haven't seen it yet now you as a skillful reader know what it refers to and who his is referring to Right. Now, shall we look at the next sentence? Our neighbor's old car didn't work, but the new one is fine. The same thing is repeated in this sentence. Our neighbor's is in italics and the word car is also in italics. The word there and the word one are underlined. Now, 
our neighbors is referring to the word there. It's in plural, our neighbors, so there is also in the plural form. Car refers to one. Instead of saying their new car, the writer has used the word the new, their new one and one is referring to car. Let us look at sentence 3. Sentence 3, everyone seems to think the chairman is guilty. If so, he will probably resign. If not, we should apologize to him. These are three sentences. The first one has the word the chairman and guilty in italics. And in the second half, we have the three words so, not and him underlined. Him refers to the chairman and the word guilty has two words in the second and the third sentences. So, if so, so refers to guilty and if not, not also refers to guilty. Now just for a minute, substitute the word guilty for the underlined words. Everyone seems to think the chairman is guilty. If he is guilty, he will probably resign. If he is not guilty, we should apologize to him. Now, that would make the reading of this sentence very clumsy. If it was to be read aloud, even then it would be clumsy and if it was just read silently, it would again be confusing. So, I hope you understood the use of references. It makes the text smoother to read and quicker to comprehend. Everyone seems to think the chairman is guilty. If so, he will probably resign. If not, we should apologize to him. Sentence 4, Mrs. Mahmood thought the new curtains were a waste of money and Saima, her daughter-in-law, thought the same. Now here, the new curtains were a waste of money. These are in italics and the word the same is underlined. Instead of using the phrase, the new curtains were a waste of money, the writer has substituted the word the same, the phrase the same instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 words instead of using those 8 words, the, the words that are underlined, 2 words have been substituted. Mrs. Mahmood thought the new curtains were a waste of money. And Saima, her daughter-in-law, thought the same. That is, she also thought the new curtains were a waste of money. Sentence 5. Although the new hostel warden does not seem to trust the guard, everyone else did. The word did in the second half of the sentence refers back to trusting the guard. I hope you have been able to make the connections between the italicized words and the underlined words. Let us look at sentence 6 and 7. Shama liked the brown sofa, but her husband Salman preferred the red. Number 7, the chair was so well made that Mrs. Gull decided to buy two and the word two and chair, you have to make the connections between the two. Now, we were looking at references, now we shall look at connectives. This is another kind of link. This is a link which is made by conjunctions that join ideas into some kind of relationship within the text. Now these words or phrases are also known as transitional markers, transitional that is 
something that comes between two points, something that links this with this point. And these markers, they indicate seven things. The first is result, second is contrast, third is comparison, fourth is illustration or example, fifth cause and effect, sixth a series of stages or series of events, time sequence. And number seven is addition. Let us look at signals that show result. On your screen you will see six words, four phrases and if you look at them carefully you will notice that they are markers that signal result. When you are reading a text, whether it is two sentences or three sentences or a whole paragraph, these words will tell you that one part of the sentence and this other part of the sentence they are connected and the connection is a connection of result. You look at the examples given there and the example is the first example. There were no reasons for Mavish to stay, so she returned to her home. The word so tells you the result because there were no reasons for her to stay, so she returned to her home. The second example, the people objected to the new taxes, therefore they were angry when the government passed the tax bill. Now the word therefore tells you the result, the result of their objection. They were angry. In the same way, you will find that the other words in that little uh, word bank given on your screen, all those words also signal result. The word thus, the word uh, hence, the word accordingly, the word consequently, the phrase as a consequence. These are all signals telling the reader that one part of the sentence is connected to the other part and it shows the connection of result. Now we will look at another example and that is uh, words that signal contrast, contrast between two things, maybe, maybe more than two things. And the words are, you are all familiar with them, with their very common words, words like but, however, yet, although, on the contrary, in contrast, instead, still, despite, conversely, nevertheless, even though, on the other hand, in spite of. The first example says, although he works late at night, yet, he appears fresh in the morning. There are two signals over there, although and yet. In the second one, the second example, despite the fierce snowstorm, the caravan of Afghan refugees kept moving on. And the word despite signals to you the contrast, the difference. It's although there, there was a fierce storm, snowstorm, and the caravan kept moving. And in the same way, all the other words in that word bank can be used to show contrast. Let us look at a third one, a third connective which shows comparison and the words are very familiar, very familiar common words. The word like, 
likewise, as well, just as, just like, similarly, in a similar fashion, equally, in like manner, as, in the same way. Take the first example. Driving a motor car is a skill we learn through practice. Similarly, cooking is a skill we learn through hands-on experience. Here are two things, in this sentence two things are being talked about. One is the driving a motor car and the other is cooking. And you are told that both are skills. And the word similarly tells you that just like driving a Notice that in the second sentence we do not have the word driving a motor car. The word similarly tells you that it relates to driving a motor car. Just as driving a motor car is a skill, cooking is also a skill which we learn through experience, through practice. And the word similarly compares the two skills. The second example, when family members communicate, they are more likely to solve their problems. In a similar fashion, countries can best solve their problems through communication. And you find that two situations are being compared, a family and countries. And the phrase in a similar fashion connects the two ideas, the two family and countries, their problems are put together, they are compared and the word, the phrase that tells you that they are being compared is in a similar fashion. The fourth connective or the link word or words, are words that show illustration or example, words that are used to illustrate what is being said. And the words are, for example, in a sentence, uh, for instance, sorry, um, to illustrate once, such as, including. And the examples are, our history teacher is very absent-minded. Last week, for instance, he went to work on Sunday. Now the word, the two, uh, the phrase for instance, he is illustrating what he said in the first part of this. In the first part, uh, the sentence, in the first part of the sentence, it is, our history teacher is very absent-minded. All right, he is absent-minded. How do we know? To illustrate the point that is made in the first part, he says, for last week, for instance, for instance means example. Last week, for example, he went to work on Sunday. And that illustrates what is said in the first part of the sentence. Look at the second example, very illustrative. The second example is, my grandmother does not hear very well. For example, whenever I say, Salam Nani, she answers, Alhamdulillah. And the word, for example, is the same as, for instance. You can substitute these words, you can use one for the other not much difference, but it means the same. Having said, my grandmother is, uh, does not hear very well. To illustrate what was said in the first part, he gives you an example. For example, he illustrates what was said in the first half, right? Now let us look at another link word. The link words in number 5, they all show cause and effect. These are words like thus, 
Consequently, therefore, if dash 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 then, because, since, accordingly, so, because of, result, as a result. If it gets too humid, then our wooden doors swell up and become hard to operate. The word if and then tell you that there is a cause and there is an effect. If it gets too humid, that is the cause part. The cause of humidity, it has an effect. Uh, humidity has an effect. And what is the effect? That the wooden doors swell up and become hard to operate. A good reader, one glance the word if and, and, and he, he knows that in this sentence the writer is talking about cause and effect. And these are the two link words, these are the clues if and then. Look at the second example. Because the varnish wore off the table, fungus has begun to grow on it. Again, the word because signals cause and effect. The cause is that the varnish has worn off. The cause for the growth of fungus is the varnish wearing off the table. Uh, number six and these are words that show a series of events or a process or time. Very familiar words, words like one, two, three, since, first, second, third, lastly, then, while, at last, next, before, after, soon, afterward, soon, uh, often, during, as, now, until, previously, finally, immediately, frequently. <clears throat> These are all words that show some connection. The first example. First, I skim the newspaper to see what films are on. Then I circle the ones I want to record on my VCR. Now the word first and the word then show you the sequence of time, the sequence of events. First you pick up the newspaper and you skim through it, you flip through the pages and then the next thing you do is that you circle the names of films you want to video on your cassette recorder. So the, the words first, then, first, second, next, afterwards and then finally, these are all words that show the, a link in time or a link in a series of things that you are doing. First you did this, then you did that, afterwards you did that and a good reader does not waste much time over these things. He, he, he is practiced enough to f know that alright these are signals, these are signals that tell me first this is done, then next, then next, then next. Look at the second example. Previously the two countries got along. Now. Uh, previously, sorry, the two countries did not get along. Now they have resumed diplomatic relations. Previously and now are two words that show time. Sometime in the past they were not friendly. The two countries did not get along. Now they have resumed diplomatic relations and previously and now are signals showing passage of time. 
Now the last category is of words that show addition, something is being added on and the words are and, besides, first of all, second, secondly, third, thirdly and also being also another and two furthermore next as well as in addition secondly finally and moreover all these words are used to show that something else is being added on to what has been said previously the two examples Kamran Ali smokes too much furthermore he drops ash all over the floor Kamran Ali does two things he smokes a lot not only that he is dropping ash all over the floor the word furthermore is adding on to the act of smoking in the same way if you look at example 2 my mother can read and write Pashto as well as speak and understand Sindhi. A real linguist. Hmm? As well as the phrase as well as is adding on to my mother's ability of reading and writing Pashto and instead of saying um, my mother can read and write Pashto as well as just adds on. I mean you can also use the word and my mother can read and write Pashto and speak and understand Sindhi. So these words phrases like as well as in addition to moreover these are all words that writers use. Now I must point out something to you that writers do not like to repeat the same words again and again. In every word bank that you saw for every category you notice that there were a number of words and writers when they are writing like to uh, vary their sentences otherwise uh, it would become very very dull to read a piece of writing which repeats the same words. So sometimes you will find writers using the word more, moreover and sometimes you will find them using the word furthermore and sometimes you will find the uh, writers using in addition. They all mean the same. It's just that the, the writer it's up to him. It's, he likes to use a variety of words. The writer likes to play with words and I hope you have learnt link words, how link words are used, how references are used. These are all ways to make your writing smoother, your reading smoother. Now we will look at two more paragraphs, two sample paragraphs. Look at sample one. Very interesting. Some few of course still believe that Shakespeare could not have written the plays attributed to him. But they have difficulty explaining the fact that many contemporaries of Shakespeare who knew and worked with him considered him first as the actual author and second a very fine author indeed. Ben Jonson for example never doubted the authenticity of the plays. William Green also referred to Shakespeare as a very fine playwright. These are only two of the many contemporary references that leave little doubt that Shakespeare wrote the plays, that Shakespeare wrote the plays of William Shakespeare. Now, if you look at the paragraph, you will notice there are certain words that are in uh, rectangular boxes and there are certain words that are circled. Now, I shall go through this paragraph with you and point out to, to you how they are connected. Look at the word, the word him, the first circled word. What does him refer to? 
who does him refer to? You will notice if you read carefully, the word him refers back to Shakespeare and the word they, the next circled word, who does they refer to? But they have difficulty explaining the fact, who are they? If you read, go back and read, some few. So, the second word that is circled, that is they, they refers to those some few. Look at the word who. Who does the word who refers to who knew? Who are these? The contemporaries of Shakespeare and worked with him. Him again, of course, refers to Shakespeare. They did him. First, uh, and let us look at the next bo uh, circled word, and that is these in the last sentence. These are only two of the many contemporary references. Now, who do you think these refers to? These refer to Ben Jonson and William Green. These are only two of the many contemporary references and the two contemporary references are one is Ben Jonson and the other is William Green. Now, we will look at the words that were in boxes. These are the connectives and there are six connectives in this passage and you will notice that these connectives belong to different categories. The first one the first box phrase is of course and you will notice that this is a, an example of illustration. The, pass, uh, the words of course illustrate or let us say confirm that some believe that Shakespeare could not have written those plays. The second connective is but and it is a connective showing contrast. It shows the contrast between uh, in those people who on the one hand they believe and on the other hand they have difficulty in explaining why Shakespeare's contemporaries considered him a good playwright. And the third and fourth connectives are for the word first and the word second. Notice the word first and the word second are boxed. They are both connectives of addition. They are adding on to what has been said earlier. And what has been said earlier? What has been said earlier is that these people have difficulties. The people who believe that Shakespeare could not have written those plays. They have two difficulties. Difficulties first to explain why he was uh, as an author and second as a fine playwright. The fifth connective is the, word, uh, is the phrase for example. Now, for example, you know is an illustration. The author illustrates what he has said before. He gives an example and the example is of Ben Jonson. Ben Jonson is an example of a contemporary of Shakespeare, right? And the last one is the word also. The word also is again an addition. It is a word that adds on to what has been said earlier. And uh, the example of another contemporary of Shakespeare's, that is William Green. The first was Ben Jonson, and then he uses the word also. Also refers to William Green. Now, this was uh, an exercise to show you a sample, to show you how 
a paragraph is made up of connectives and references. Now we will show we will look at another example and this is an example drawn from computers uh, an area that you are studying an area that sh should be familiar to you. Uh, read the passage in fact I will read it for you a computer like any other machine is used because it does certain jobs better and more efficiently than humans. It can receive more information and process it faster than any human. The speed at which a computer works can replace weeks or even months of pencil and paper work. Therefore, computers are used when the time saved offsets their cost which is one of the many reasons they are used so much in business, industry and research. Now you will notice that in this paragraph again there are certain words that are boxed and certain words that are in that have been circled. Now notice the first it what does it refer to? It refers to the word computer. The second it it refers to the phrase like any other machine is used because the the second it refers to the uh, goes back and refers to the word to the phrase like any other machine now the third it refers to the word information the word there it refers to computers. The, fix, the fifth word which is circled is which and which refers to the time saved offsets their cost. And the last circled word is they and they refers back to computers. Now I want you to notice it is very easy. Uh, wherever the word it, it referred to a computer and the word they, it is in the plural, it refers to the word computers in the last sentence. A, a very easy hint for you, where it is computer, it is it, it, it and where it is computers, the word is they. Now you will do an exercise. I shall read out three paragraphs. After every paragraph you will draw a box round the word. You will find in this paragraph, in the paragraphs that I read, there, are, there will be certain words that are circled. You have to draw a box round the word that the circled words refer to. Do you understand? In the paragraphs that I am going to read there will be certain words that are circled. You have to draw a, a, a box round the word that the circled word refers to. I shall read the first paragraph. Computers are electronic machines that process information. They are capable of communicating with the user, of doing different kinds of arithmetic operations and of making three kinds of decisions. However, they are incapable of thinking. They accept data and instructions as input and after processing it, they output the results. Now the words that have been circled over here in this paragraph are that, they, the beginning of the second sentence and then the word they in the third sentence and they in the last sentence. There is another word it in the last sentence. So total there are five words that are circled that, they, 
they, it and they. Take a minute and think which words are being referred to. Computers are electronic machines that process information. Now the word that, what does that refer to? It refers to machines. So you put a box, make a little rectangle around the word machine. Now do you realize that the word that, it's a connective, it is, you, uh, it is referring back to the word machine. Next sent, next word, they, they, what is they refer to? It is talking about computers. And then in the third sentence, they, however they are incapable of thinking. Now here again the word they refers to computers. And in the last sentence, the word it, what is it referring to? They accept data instructions as input and after processing it, that is input. The word it is referring to the word input. It is referring back to the word input. And in the last word, they, it's computers. All the words that were circled, the, the they's referred to the word computers. Now the second paragraph. When talking about computers, both hardware and software need to be considered. The former refers to the actual machinery, whereas the latter refers to the programs which control and coordinate the activities of the hardware while processing the data. In this paragraph, two words have been circled and the words are former and the word which. Now, the word former, what does former refer to? You go back to the first sentence and it refers to the word hardware. The word which, what does the word which refer to? It refers to the word programs. Paragraph 3. The first computer was built in 1930, but since then computer technology has evolved a great deal. There are three kinds of computers in use today. The mainframe, the mini computer and the microcomputer. These all have one thing in common. They operate quickly and accurately in solving problems. Two words have been circled in this paragraph and those words are these and they. The word these refers to, this, to the phrase in the second sentence, the phrase the mainframe, the mini computer and the micro, micro computer. These all have one thing in common. What does these refer to? These is talking about the mainframe, the mini computer and the micro computer. They operate quickly and accurately in solving problems. What does they refer to? Again, they refers to the same phrase, the mainframe, the mini computer and the micro computer. Now we shall look at another exercise. This is an exercise in which you have to choose the correct connectives. A small word bank is given you. There are five or six words in a box. You have to choose one of those words. You may repeat, you will find that some of these words can be used more than once. 
I shall read out the sentences and I shall give you some time to fill in the correct connective. Floppies are very cheap. Dash the gap. You have to fill in this gap. I shall use the word dash. Floppies are very cheap, dash. They are slow and have a limited capacity. Now out of those five or six words in the word bank, you have to choose the right one. Which one, which connective do you think would be suitable over here? It's the word but, because we are contrasting two things, that floppies are very cheap, but they are slow and have a limited capacity. Hard disks are fast and can store large amounts of data, dash, they are fixed inside the computer, dash, you cannot use them to transfer data. What words would be suitable over here? The words that would be suitable would be however and so. Hard disks are fast and can store large amounts of data. However, they are fixed inside the computer, so, so you cannot use them to transfer data. You can transfer data with removable hard disks but they are expensive. CD-ROM disks can hold quite large amounts of data. Dash, they are usually read only. Dash, you cannot change the information on them. CD-ROM disks can hold quite large amounts of data. However, they are usually read only. For this reason, you cannot change the information on them. And the last sentence, magneto-optical disks are like CD-ROMs dash, you can write data onto them. Magneto-optical disks are like CD-ROMs, but you can write data onto them. They are removable and have large capacities, dash, they are expensive and do not conform to a standard. They are removable and have large capacities, however, they are expensive and do not conform to a standard. Dash, they are not very common. The suitable word would be, therefore, they are not very common. Magnetic tape is cheap and has a large capacity. Dash, it does not allow random access and drives are slow. Dash, it is only suitable for backups. Now, the first dash I have already supplied you with the word. The word is because, because it does not allow a random access and drives are slow, dash it is only suitable for backups. The correct word would be therefore it is only suitable for backups. Now with that we come to the end of today's lesson. In today's lesson we had practice in recognizing link words, connectives, references. These were skills that you practiced for improving your reading speed and comprehension. If you can do all this, your reading speed will definitely increase. So till next time, Allah Hafiz.